a difference which is born out of a non-muttaqi mind always leads to deviance. And that is what began to happen later on. Now we have reached a stage where all the ummah, so-called ummah Muhammad Wasallam, is divided and split. And this is exactly what has been predicted by Rasulullah Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in that particular prediction, he disowns these people as if they never belonged to him. One particular hadith which you must have read, well, I quote, which says, Sayati ala nasi zamanun la yabqa min al Islam illa ismahu, as you see today. Wala yabqa min al Quran illa rasmahu. An unfortunate time would come when Islam will be left only in name. Wala yabqa min al Quran illa rasmahu. And the Quran will be no more but for writing, for scribing. Like you see, you know, you hear every other day somebody has written the Quran with a thread of gold and this and that and only the artificial superficial view of the Quran is displayed the meaning is forgotten it no longer runs in the blood of the human beings that is Muslims that is the meaning la yabqa min al quran illa rasmuhu masajiduhum amiratun as you see, so many mosques filled with people. Wahya kharabu min al huda, but they will be empty of guidance. When these things happen, when Hazur Akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam dissociates himself from the Muslim leadership of that period, and referring to them, he says, "Olamauhum." Sharru man tahta adhim is sama. He doesn't say ulamai. Ulama of those people will have nothing to do with me. They will be the worst people under the firmament of heaven. So this is the answer to your question. It was destined to happen that way because there was no longer the central leadership either under prophethood or under khilafah to keep resolving these issues and have the Ummah united. What was the answer? What was missing? It was an authority appointed by God. So to put the, the Ummah back into order and bring them under one united leadership was the only answer. But it could happen only when God sent somebody. And this exactly is the prediction of Muhammad Rasulullah that Imam Mahdi would appear. He would be appointed by God himself. Messiah would come, who would be a leader appointed by God. And they would be provided with special powers from Allah and light from Allah to bring the Ummah back to one central leadership. We believe as Ahmadis that that process has started. It started around a hundred years ago and that Imam Mahdi and Messiah has come and he has started the process of reuniting the Ummah, bringing them one after the other together under the one banner of Khilafah which he left behind. And this is what you are seeing as a phenomenon which is continually progressing forward and spreading wider and covering the entire globe. So this is my short answer to your question, please. And I would turn to the second questioner. Hazur, is this on? It's working? Yes. Okay, uh, I just send greetings from Canada, from the people of Canada. Right. And uh, I'm a guest, uh, Mr. Uh, Jamil Butt uh, invited me today. Right. And uh, 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 Lake Manir, Manir, I met today. Thank you. You're most welcome. And uh, I feel most welcome. <laughs> and uh, it's a pleasure. And I've been fed well here. And uh, I see you're uh, fun-loving people. And 
I don't want to ask any hard questions or heavy questions, you know. Anything, you're most welcome. <laughs> uh, my, um, my wife had one question. She feels uh, out of place a little Is bit. Is she here, sitting among the ladies? Yeah, no, she's here among the men. I see, where, where about? Over there, oh yes. Why didn't you ask your question yourself? Huh? You could have come forward and... Okay, please. I'll, I'll ask her question first, then I'll ask another please. question. Okay. Uh, she, we didn't, we're not acquainted with your customs, and, uh, and I know amongst our uh, gatherings in our uh, assembly, uh, the women and men meet together, and uh, she was wondering uh, why it was different. Maybe you have no room, or... And she also... <laughs> She uh, reached out her hand to shake a uh, man's hand, and it was not accepted. I'll explain that. Okay. Thank you. Please be seated. You see, you have already suffered enough with a permissive attitude towards the interrelationship between sexes. You have reached a stage where instead of asking me the question, you should have been capable of answering the question yourself. The fact is that the free interrelationship has pushed the society in the direction of a single-minded pursuit of voluptuous pleasure. And there is no denial of that. It has reached a stage where nature has already started punishing the permissive society. In so many ways, it has been punishing the, the permissive society for the last so many hundred years. But now it has reached a stage whereby as if the nature would exterminate those people who do not listen to the call of nature and the call of morality. For instance, there was uh, gonorrhea to begin with, then came syphilis, they thought they had fought enough with syphilis and it's very surprisingly they were just sex related diseases. The bacteria, the virus could not spread through any other means. So it was not the result of natural meeting of husband and wife. These diseases were only a result of irregularities of contact between man and woman. And it was permissiveness which helped them spread like sometimes wildfires, even in America. An attempt was made to counter these threats and the doctors thought we have got over it, no more of such nuisance. Then came syphilis, then it was suppressed, it went deeper into the system. People thought they had done away with it, yet it went into the basic human cells. And I'll come with the proof of this statement later on. Uh, 